Praise the Lord. Beloved, greetings to you and to your household in the name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. I trust that all is well with you. So today we are continuing our studies on the Holy Bible. And today we are studying the first chapter of the second book of the Old Testament, which is Exodus. Beloved, Moses is the author of Exodus and he's the same person who wrote the first five books of the Old Testament. And 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 to 21 let us know that the men and women who wrote the books of the Bible did not write them based on their own understanding, but they wrote as they were moved by the Spirit of God. And so, beloved, Moses did not write these books based on his own experience or his imagination, but he wrote it as he was moved by the Holy Spirit of God. And so, beloved, by the grace of God, we have finished the first book of the Old Testament. So if you missed any of the studies on the book of Genesis, please watch it from this channel. You can watch from Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Genesis chapter 50. And so, beloved, if you have already not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe so that you always be notified whenever a lesson becomes available. So the book of Exodus begins where the book of Genesis ends. And in Genesis, we learned that God created this beautiful world, including everything that is in it, and created Adam and Eve in his own image and placed them in the Garden of Eden and gave them authority to govern this world and to subdue everything. But when Adam and Eve decided to obey Satan and eat from the tree which God had told them not to eat from, the Bible says that they lost their beauty home in the garden of Eden that God had created for them. So at this time, it seemed as if Satan had succeeded in destroying God's perfect creation. But beloved, God had a plan. He had a plan to restore back the world to its original form. And so beloved, even though he cursed Adam and Eve for their disobedience, he made a promise to them in Genesis 3 verse 15 that Eve's offspring will crush the head of the serpent, meaning that Eve's descendants will come and destroy Satan. Satan's work so that mankind will be redeemed from the sin that has come into the world. And so when God made this promise to Eve, he was looking throughout Eve's descendants to choose one who it will be able, beloved, for him to use that person to bring about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to come and redeem us from this curse that has come into the world. And so when God looked through, he found none other than Abraham. And so, beloved, God put Abraham Abraham through so many tests and he found Abraham faithful to use him to bring the Messiah who is the seed of Eve to come and destroy Satan's work so that mankind will be redeemed. So because God was going to use Abraham's descendants to bring about the Messiah to redeem the world from its sin, beloved, God was always also looking through Abraham's descendants, one who will be obedient to him as well, so that he will make the Messiah come through their descendants. And so Abraham had many sons, but God chose one, Isaac, to be the one through whom the Messiah will come. And Isaac also had twin boys, Esau and Jacob, and God chose Jacob to be the one through whom the Messiah will come. And Jacob also had 12 sons, and God chose the fourth son, Judah, to be the one through whom the Messiah will will come. And so, beloved, the whole Bible is about God's plan to bring about the Messiah, to redeem the world and take it back to the original form that he created it to be. Beloved, that is why the Bible says it in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has good plans for us to give us a future of hope. Beloved, he planted this world, beloved, and made it lovely and made it sin free. Everything that he created, the Bible said that it was good. But the enemy, Satan, deceived Adam and Eve and brought sin into the world. And God's plan, beloved, was to restore this world to its original sinless form that he created it to be. 
So, beloved, after 4,000 years of God making this promise to Eve that her offspring or her descendants will crush the head of the serpent, this promise was fulfilled and Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, beloved, to fulfill this promise and he destroyed the works of the enemy. And so, beloved, God's word is fulfilled, but we are now reading the account of how it all happened. And in Genesis chapter 47, we found out that the grandson of Abraham, Jacob, moved to Egypt with all his 12 sons and all his descendants because of the famine that had come on the world. And beloved, at that time, his 11 son, Joseph, was the governor over all of Egypt. And so they were given the best part of the land of Egypt, a place called Goshen, to settle in. And after 17 years of living in Egypt, Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, dies. And Joseph also dies after 93 years of living in Egypt. He died when he was 110. And so, beloved, this is where the book of Genesis ended. And so in the book of Exodus, we are going to see the birth of a nation. And Egypt is where the delivery is taking place. The word Exodus means to go out. Jacob's descendants, the Israelites, entered Egypt as a family, but they will come out of Egypt as a whole nation. Jacob, also known as Israel, entered into the land of Egypt with only 70 people. But after 350 years, they have grown to become a nation of around 2 million people. And so, beloved, let's go on to today's study and find out the word of God that God has for us. And so, beloved, in verse 1 of Exodus chapter 1 says, The sons of Jacob who went to Egypt with him, each with his family, were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The total number of these people directly descended from Jacob was 70. His son Joseph was already in Egypt. In the course of time, Joseph, his brothers, and all the rest of that generation died. Joseph was the great grandson of Abraham, the one whom God filled with wisdom to save the whole world at that time from famine. Because of this great wisdom that God gave him, the Pharaoh of that time made Joseph governor over all of Egypt. And so Joseph served as governor over Egypt for 80 years until he died. He died at the age of 110. And in that time, all his brothers also died after him. And so, beloved, verse 7 says, But their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. So after the death of Joseph and that generation, the descendants kept having children, beloved. And the Bible says that, in fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land of Egypt. And so verse 8 says, eventually a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now at number S and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the city of Python and Ramses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians were oppressed, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to miss mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. 
they were ruthless in all their demands. The Egyptians cruelly mistreated the Israelites, but no amount of afflictions could destroy God's plans from coming to pass in their lives. And this is why it says it in Isaiah 54 verse 17, that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Beloved, the weapons of their mistreatment will not be able to defeat or to destroy the purpose of which God had called the Israelites to come to be. Their mistreatment, beloved, and their oppression towards the Israelites could never prevent God's will from coming to pass in the Israelites' lives. And this is why even as they oppressed them more, then God even made them multiply and increase in number. And so, beloved, what this is telling us is that no matter what troubles and trials you are going through right now, the devil's main aim of bringing those troubles to you is to prevent God's purpose from coming to pass in your life. The devil wants to crush your spirit and this is why he brings sadness, sorrow and he brings terrible things beloved to distract you from thinking about the goodness of God. But God is using this scripture beloved to tell us that no amount of trouble or oppression that the enemy brings at us beloved will destroy his purpose for our life. The more the enemy throws troubles and problems problems at you. Beloved, the more the grace of God will be at hand to receive you and to make way so that you will be able to bring out the best that God has put in you. And so beloved, whatever you are going through right now, don't let that challenge beloved make you oppressed. Don't let it crush your spirits to think that God doesn't care about you. If you are reading the word of God, beloved, then you must understand that this word of God is for us. God wants you to know that the same way he thought about the Israelites when they were oppressed is the same way, beloved, that he thinks about you. And so he's going to use his power on your behalf, beloved, and even make you stronger as you are oppressed. Then he will make his grace, beloved, abound in your life. God will give you his strength, beloved, and empower you to be able, beloved, to overcome all the challenges that the enemy has thrown against you. And so, beloved, cheer up because if Jesus Christ is for you, then no amount of oppression or depression or the challenges of the enemy can wear you down. God, beloved, will strengthen you. He will uphold you with his power and his grace, beloved, will go ahead of you and fight every battle, physical and spiritual battles, beloved. The word of God says that God himself is the one who will be fighting your battles for you if you put everything in his hands. And so when Pharaoh realized that his oppression could not prevent the Israelites from increasing in number, verse 15 says that, then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Shifra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives fear God, they refuse to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. The Israelites multiplied and outnumbered the Egyptians and so they saw this as a threat because they were afraid that if their enemies come to war against them, the Israelites would join up with their enemies and defeat them in battle. And this is why they ordered for their population to be controlled by killing the baby boys. But no matter how they treated the Israelites, they were still fruitful and multiplied. And this is because of the promise that God had made to Abraham, that he will make Abraham's descendants as numerous as the stars. And so because of this promise, no weapon of the Egyptians against the Israelites was going to work. And so, beloved, after the midwives refused to kill the baby boys, Pharaoh called them in and said to them, Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to leave? The midwives replied, The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They are lively. By the time we arrive, their babies are already born. 
So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives fear God, he gave them families of their own. Because the midwives fear God and put God's word ahead of Pharaoh's word and did not kill the baby boys, the Bible says that God blessed them with families of their own. In those days, it is thought that midwives were women who were unable to have children. But because of this women obedience and their fear of God, God, beloved, blessed them and was gracious to them and gave them children of their own. And so, beloved, after Pharaoh found out that his plan of killing the baby boys was not succeeding, verse 22 says that, he said to his people and gave them an order, throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile, but you may let the girls leave. And Hebrew is another word of describing the children of Jacob or the Israelites. And so because Pharaoh's command to kill the baby boys at birth did not succeed, he made a radical command that the baby boys of the Israelites should be thrown in the Nile. And beloved, the physical reason behind Pharaoh's cruel decision to kill the baby boys of the Israelites is that he feared that if war broke out, the children or the descendants of Jacob, who are the Israelites, would join in with their enemies and fight against them. But the spiritual reason behind Pharaoh wanting to destroy the Israelite baby boys is to prevent the Messiah, Jesus Christ, from being born to come and save the world from its sinful state. Satan knew that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will come from the descendants of Jacob. And so just as he entered into Herod to kill the baby boys at the time when Jesus was born, is the same way he entered Pharaoh to destroy the Israelites to prevent the Messiah, Jesus Christ, from being born. But the more they oppress the Israelites, the more God made sure that his plan will succeed. You see, beloved, if the fight was just between Pharaoh and the Israelites, then Pharaoh would have clearly won. But this battle was between God and Pharaoh because it was God who had made a promise to Abraham and set him apart to be a holy people, to be a people that through them, the Messiah will come and redeem the world from its sinful state. And so because God was the one who had called the Israelites and separated them to himself for the purpose of bringing about the Messiah to redeem the world from its sinful state, beloved, God was the one going to fight for them. God was the one going to fight Pharaoh. It wasn't the Israelites. And so, beloved, because God has never lost a battle, we know that this battle God was going to win against Pharaoh and his people. And so, beloved, when it comes to our life, God is telling us through this scripture that if we have made the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we have submitted our life to Jesus, then, beloved, everything that concerns us concerns God. Whatever goes on in our life, beloved, because we have made Jesus Christ our Lord, it means that everything that concerns us concerns him. And so if people are against you, beloved, then know that it is God that they are against. And this is why Jesus says it in Matthew 6 verse 33, that you should first seek his kingdom and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. And so beloved, if you have sought God first, if you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, then everything that you need shall be added unto you. And so beloved, is it people who have risen up against you and are trying, beloved, so that you will not have the things that God has planned for you to have? Beloved, don't worry about all these people because God is the one who is going to fight against everyone who has risen up against you. 
So beloved, whatever situation you are going through right now, maybe it is a health problem that you are struggling with, or it is a financial problem, beloved, that is stealing all your joy. Beloved, God knows all the situations that you are going through right now. He knows all the problems that is coming up against you. And just as he was willing to fight on behalf of the Israelites, so, beloved, will he fight for you? He will fight on your behalf, beloved, and give you victory over everything that is stealing your joy and your peace right now. So in this chapter, Pharaoh wages war at God by killing the baby boys of the people he has set aside to bring about the Messiah. So beloved, is God going to overlook Pharaoh's wickedness and his devilish ways of killing these innocent boys? Or is God going to arise, beloved, and defend the people of Israel that he has set aside? So, beloved, join me and let's find out what God does in the next study, which is Exodus chapter 2. And so, beloved, until then, may the Lord be your strength and defend you, beloved, and protect you from all harm in Jesus' name. You are blessed.